In this video we will discuss pathogenesis of atherosclerosis. For understanding the pathogenesis, it is important to know about the histology of the artery. As we are concerned about atherosclerosis, we will explain the histology of coronary artery, which is a medium-sized muscular artery. The wall of the artery is made of three basic constituents, namely endothelial cells. These are single layer of simple squamous epithelium. Second is the smooth muscle cells. And third component is the extracellular matrix, which in turn contains varying amounts of elastin, collagen and glycosaminoglycans. These components are arranged into three concentric coats or tunicae, namely tunica intima, tunica media, and tunica adventitia. Let's draw them to understand in a better way. Let's take a cross section of the coronary artery and study. The tunica intima is the thinnest layer of the arterial wall. It consists of endothelium, which is supported by the basement membrane. Endothelium consists of single layer of simple squamous epithelium. Surrounding the basement membrane is the thin layer of subendothelial connective tissue. The last layer of intima is the internal elastic lamina. It is a fenestrate sheet of elastic fibers. It separates the intima from the tunica media. It also allows diffusion of nutrients from the blood in the lumen to the inner part of the media. Tunica media is the thickest layer of the arterial wall. It consists of two components arranged in concentric layers. These are smooth muscle cells and elastin fibers. Smooth muscle cells contracts and relaxes causing vasoconstriction and vasodilatation while the elastin fibers allow the arteries to expand during systole and contract during diastole, which causes the blood to propel forward. The media is separated from adventitia by the external elastic lamina. Tunica adventitia is the outermost layer of the arterial wall. It is made up of loose connective tissue, vasa vasarum, and nerve fibers. The vasa vasarum supplies nutrients to the adventitia and the outer layers of the tunica media. Another important thing to be discussed before proceeding to the pathogenesis of atherosclerosis is the function of the endothelial cells. Endothelial cells are multifunctional cells. In normal state it is anti-inflammatory, that is it inhibits leukocyte adhesion and migration. It is antithrombotic, that is it inhibits platelet adhesion and aggregation. It is antihypertrophic, that is it inhibits vascular smooth muscle cell proliferation and migration. It regulates the vascular tone by regulating tunica media smooth muscle cell tone. This is mediated by endothelium-derived nitric oxide. It causes smooth muscle relaxation, thus, it causes vasodilation. Endothelium also produces endothelin, it causes medial smooth muscle contraction, thereby it causes vasoconstriction. Most important is the nitric oxide. It synthesized by the endothelial nitric oxide synthase from the L-arginine. The nitric oxide not only causes vasodilation, but it is also responsible for the other protective properties of the endothelium. Injury to the endothelium causes activation of the endothelial cells. The activated endothelium promotes the formation of atherosclerosis via various mechanism. These include increased endothelial permeability, platelet aggregation, leukocyte adhesion, and generation of cytokines. Decreased production or activity of nitric oxide, it may be one of the earliest signs of atherosclerosis. Let's discuss the pathogenesis in detail. Let's draw the microscopic image of a part of the coronary artery to discuss the pathogenesis of atherosclerosis. Atherosclerosis is a chronic inflammatory and healing response of the arterial wall to endothelial injury. The main reasons for the endothelial injury are risk factors like hypercholesterolemia, hypertension, diabetes, and smoking. So, when the endothelial injury occurs, 
the permeability of the endothelium is increased. The circulating LDL now easily gets deposited in the tunica intima. These risk factors increase vascular production of reactive oxygen species. The reactive oxygen species causes decreased reduced endothelial nitric oxide availability, and it also causes oxidation of LDL. This is an important part in the pathogenesis of atherosclerosis. Due to reduced endothelial nitric oxide availability, the protective function of nitric oxide is lost, that is now there is increased leukocyte adhesion and migration, mainly monocytes and T-lymphocytes. There is platelet adhesion and aggregation. There is smooth muscle migration and proliferation. And nitric oxide mediated beneficial vasodilation effect is lost. Now comes the next damaging part, the oxidized LDL. Our immune system recognizes the oxidized LDL as exogenous, so monocytes and a few T lymphocytes are recruited to the site of lesion to clear the oxidized LDL. Once the monocyte reaches the intima, it differentiates into macrophages. These macrophages then engulf the oxidized LDL. As the macrophages get filled with these oxidized LDL, they are called foam cells. Foam cells are hallmark of atherosclerotic lesions. To the naked eye it is visible as an elongated yellow discoloration on the luminal surface of the artery, called fatty streak. It is the first sign of atherosclerosis visible without magnification. The foam cells and recruited T cell produces cytokines and chemokines that in turn recruit and activate more inflammatory cells and produce more reactive oxygen species. So, this inflammatory response becomes a vicious cycle and responsible for initiation and progression of atherosclerosis. Thus, atherosclerosis is considered as a chronic inflammatory condition. With continuous supply of atherogenic oxidized lipoproteins, the macrophages engulf until they die by apoptosis and necrosis. It contributes to the formation of a soft lipid-rich core within the plaque. The cytokines and chemokines secreted by macrophages also causes smooth muscle migration from the media into intima. The migrated smooth muscle cells in intima have proliferative and synthetic properties, which is absent in the medial smooth muscle cells. So, in the intima these smooth muscle cells proliferate and secrete extracellular matrix substance like collagen. Thus, this fibroproliferative response by smooth muscle cells stabilizes the plaque. It should be noted that the migrated smooth muscle cells can also engulf the intimal lipids to form foam cells. The intimal thickening by the fibroproliferative response along with lipid accumulation results in atherosclerotic plaque formation. Plaques are white yellow and encroach into the lumen of the artery. Microscopically the atherosclerotic plaque has a fibrous cap, composed of smooth muscle cells and collagen. Just beneath the fibrous cap is more cellular region, consisting of macrophages, T cells and smooth cells. Deep to the fibrous cap is the necrotic core, consisting of lipids, dead cell debris and foam cells. The plaque can undergo calcification. And neovascularization can occur at the base of the plaque by the endothelial proliferation of vasa vasarum. These travel through the tunica media and reach the base of the plaque. It may be responsible for hemorrhage into the plaque. What are the consequences of an atheromatous plaque? First is plaque rupture. When the inflammatory response is more, the cells secrete matrix metalloproteinases. These erode the fibrous cap of the plaque. Thus, causing plaque rupture, this exposes highly thromboenic lipid core. This leads to platelets adhesion and aggregation, and it is stabilized by fibrin formation. Thus, causing thrombosis of the artery. Second consequence of atheromatous plaque is intraplaque hemorrhage due to leaky neovascularization as discussed earlier. A contained hematoma may expand the plaque or induce plaque rupture. 
Third consequence is the atheroembolism due to plate rupture. This causes microemboli. Fourth consequence is aneurysm formation. This is caused by pressure or ischemic atrophy of tunica media by the intimal plaque. Fifth consequence is the progressive growth of atheromatous plaque causing critical stenosis of the artery. So, this completes explanation of pathogenesis of atherosclerosis. Thanks for watching this video. See you soon in the next video.